Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everybody who's tuned into this telematic broadcast. A special welcome to the grade 11 and hopefully the grade 12 learners as well. I am Edwin Skrude and I will be responsible for presenting this session, telematic session on circle geometry. In a lot of schools, the grade 11s have not even started with circle geometry at this stage. That is why we invited the grade 12 learners also to attend the session. So for the 11, grade 11 learners, this will be sort of an overview of what the topic consists of. And for the grade 12 learners, it may be a recap of the work done in grade 11. This topic, circle geometry, like a lot of others, are not in the grade 12 pay setter, which means that it isn't formally taught in grade 12 again. And that is why it is crucial that from grade 11, we start investigating and making an effort to understand the work on circle geometry. It's also important that we continuously look at our work, continuously revise our uh, geometry, and not only wait until grade 12 to revise the geometry. So grade 11s, when you t get into grade 12 here, it's important that from the beginning, every day when you get homework, include a circle geometry rider in your homework so that you continuously work with these concepts. This body of work consists of theorems, converses, and corollaries. Our time doesn't allow us to go into depth into each of these concepts. But I will try and give you the core knowledge that is needed to understand what are theorems, converses, and corollaries? And these are the tools, actually, that we need to tackle the work on the geometry riders. Now, riders is just another name for geometry problems. And to solve these riders and to calculate things within uh, the circles, we need the knowledge of the theorems, the Converses and the corollaries. Of course, in your classes, you will engage in depth with these. Let me start off with the theorems. There are six Euclidean theorems in the uh, NSE curriculum, but only four of them will be examined at the end of the year, can be examined. Not all four will be examined, one out of four. There are six, but one out of four of these will be examined. And that is what, what I will focus on from the beginning. If we can have a little more focus, please. Now, the structure of a theorem Perhaps it will work better if I take the bigger page. There we go. The structure of the theorem is that the first part makes, a, the whole theorem makes a statement which we have to prove. And the first part is the given part. And the second part, which I have bolded here, is the part that we must prove. Now, I'm not going to write it out. I'm going to give you the core knowledge that is needed in order to, to prove this theorem. But when we engage with these, I will recommend that we try to do it practically. I'm going to do it theoretically. But these theorems, it's very nice to, to, to practically prove that this exists. For instance, here, yeah. if we look at this, 
we have a line drawn from the center of the circle. And this line is perpendicular to the chord. And now the theorem states that this line bisects the chord. So if we practically go and uh, construct a line, for a circle first, and a line from the center of the circle and a chord, and we construct it perpendicular to that chord, then we could go and measure whether these two parts are equal, because that is what the, the theorem says. Now, theoretically, if we prove this, what is needed is to know what I do when proving for this one. And the theorem is such that I am guided by a construction, which is a hint that I use to prove the theorem. And in this case, the hint is to do this. So from the center, I connect to the end points of the chord, which then gives me two triangles. And what do you think I will use to prove that these two parts are equal. Yes, congruency. And that is the core concept that we use in proving this particular theorem. I'm not going to write it out, because the writing out of it, that is, um, it has a structure which we have to follow, and that we should learn in our classrooms. So that is the first theorem, not necessarily in the order of importance, first, second, etc., but this is one of the four that can be examined in the National Senior Certificate examination. The second theorem that can be examined is this one. Again, look at the structure of the theorem. The statement is made that the angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle, and this is the part that we have to prove, is double the size of the angle on the circumference of the circle subtended by the same arc. Subtended by the same arc. What is me uh, meant by that? This is the angle at the center of the circle. The theorem says, the statement says that this angle is double the size of this angle. And both of these angles are subtended by the same arc. Both of them are subtended by the same arc. And we have to prove that this one is double the size of that one. Just like the previous one, there's a core concept that we need to prove this. And what we do, again, we have a construction, a hint. We draw a line through the center of the circle, connecting it with the angle on the circumference of the circle. What are the concepts that we need? In doing this, we have created again two triangles of which two sides are the radii of the circle. Therefore, we will have angles opposite equal sides an equilateral triangle. The same goes for this equilateral triangle. We also have angles opposite equal sides. Note, these two angles are not equal to those two angles. Lots of times there's confusion about that. 
So that is what we will use in proving that the whole angle is twice the size of this whole angle. What else do we have? We also have an exterior angle of this triangle, and we also have an exterior angle of this triangle. And hopefully from grade 9, we still know that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite sides. And that is the concept, the core knowledge, the tool that we need to prove this theorem. The angles opposite equal sides and the exterior angle of the triangle. That would be the theorem, the second theorem that is examinable. Let us look at the third one. Short wording, the opposite angles of a, this should be a cyclic quadrilateral, a cyclic quadrilateral, cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. That means a quadrilateral that has its endpoints on the circumference of the circle. And we must prove that they are supplementary. Again, the structure of the theorem, the last part is what we have to prove. And again, I implore you that when you start working with this, find out whether it works when you do it manually, when you do it physically. You get an, a, 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 cir a circle, you get a cyclic quad in the circle, and see whether the opposite angles are supplementary if we measure it. So the core knowledge in order to, uh, to, to, to prove this, theoretically, if I have to prove, because there are four angles, the question in the examination will state which two angles you have to, to, to prove uh, are supplementary. Then your construction is from the other two angles. Okay. Say I have to prove these two are supplementary, which is the opposite angles. Then the construction that I do is from the other angle that is not asked, and I draw from the center of the circle, connect that to the center, and also from the center of the circle, I connect to the other angle. What is the core knowledge that I need now? Of course, we had a previous um, theorem that states that the angle at the center of the circle is twice the size of the angle on the circumference of the circle that is subtended by the same chord. So this is an angle at the center of the circle which is twice the size of this one. So this one equals two of those. And also note that this is also the center of the circle, an angle at the center of the circle, the reflex angle. This angle is subtended by that arc. And this uh, angle at the center of the circle is twice the size, two times this angle. These two angles at the center of the circle combine to form a revolution, which is 360 degrees. And the sum of that would be the half of that revolution, which is 180 degrees, which means supplementary. So that is our third examinable theorem. And the fourth examinable theorem would be the angle between the tangent to a circle and the chord drawn from the point of contact 
the angle between the tangent to a circle and the chord drawn from the point of contact, that angle is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. That is the part, again, that we must prove. All these theorems, the structure of them, are the same. So it's important for us to note what it is that I have to prove and to note what the core knowledge is that I need to, to do that proof. So in this one, again I have my construction, and that is joining the point of contact between the chord and the tangent, joining that with the center of the circle, and extending it to the opposite side of the circumference of the circle. Remember, I had to prove this angle is equal to that. So from that end point, I take that end point and join it with the other side. There we go. It also works if we join it with a side, but it works nicely for me when it joins uh, to the other side. Now, what is it that we use here? The core knowledge to prove this. Here we have what I referred to earlier as a corollary. You see, we have a diameter of the circle, and one of the the previous theorem said that the angle at the center of the circle is twice the size of the angle on the circumference if the angle at the center and the one on the circumference are subtended by the same arc. In this case, the angle at the center of the circle is 180 degrees. Therefore, the angle at the circumference must be 90 degrees also known as the angle in a semicircle because if we have a diameter we have a semicircle the angle in the semicircle which is 90 degrees which is one of the things one of the concepts that I use constantly in proving the riders or solve the problems also another corollary is the fact that the angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees. Right. Also a corollary is the fact that the angles on the same side are equal if it is subtended by the same arc. So how do I go about proofi proving that this angle is equal to this one? Already, and this is a basic concept in any proofs, if we can prove, if we have to prove two things equal to each other, we look for a third thing that is equal to both of them. Then obviously we can conclude that the two are equal to each other. So if I have to prove that these two are equal, I look for a third angle that is equal to both of them. Having at the 90 degrees, I can safely say that this angle is 90 minus this one. This angle with a red dot is 90 degrees minus this one. And this angle, which I have here, is also 90 degrees minus that one. Therefore, these two are equal, and these two are equal. Therefore, the, uh, this one would also get a red dot. So the basic concept here is the angle in a semicircle 
as well as the radius that is perpendicular to the tangent line. So those are the four exam examinable um, theorems. Now, the theorems, the corollaries, and the converse theorems I'm going to use in uh, working with the riders or the, 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 the circle sums, circle problems, of which I have, um, I'm going to look at, at, at some of them that is in, in the resource that you, uh, I trust that you have with you. So let us turn to where in our resource pack just can, can find here. It starts on it starts on page four in the resource pack that you uh, were provided with. And I will be looking at specific sums. Number two, if we look at number two, now when we work, when we work with these, either it will be asked to calculate certain angles or to prove certain angles equal to each other or write uh, angles in terms of uh, different variables. Okay. I'm starting off this one particularly, ask for uh, the calculation of certain angles. Let us look at it. And how do I approach this? Our approach should be that I read the, inst the, the, the sum and follow on the sketch what is said in the sum. Previously, that was very long ago, the expectation was that learners draw the sketches. Now, in our examinations, we, the learners are given, the candidates are given the sketches. So it's, in, it's crucial that we read what the sketch says and follow in the sketch um, as uh, wh what, whatever is stated. In the diagram, points P, Q, P, Q, R, and T lie on the circumference of a circle. So immediately through my mind goes that here I have a cyclic quad uh, with the properties of a cyclic quad. And that is how I approach the circle geometry, uh, the riders or the, uh, the problems. As I read, there should be bells going off, alarm bells, if I, if I want to, in my head of what I'm working with. So I'm working with a cyclic quad here. Just keep it in mind. MW, MW, and TW are tangents to the circle at P and T, respectively. PW and TW, tangents to the circle immediately tan chord theorem, angle between the chord and the theorem, that's what I'm thinking about, as well as another corollary of which I haven't uh, taught, uh, told you, and that is that the fact that the two tangents are equal from the point to the point of contact. They are, the, these two are equal, but the, that is me. Those are just, uh, ideas that I, I gather from reading in the sketch. PT is produced to meet RU at U. Produced means just extend. PT is extended, so it's uh, uh, up to U and meets RU in U. The angle MPR, MPR, that is the whole one there, is 75 degrees. PQT, P. Q, T is 29 degrees, and Q, T, R is 34 degrees. 
the questions. Let T P W B A angle R P T equal to B R P T equal to B angle M P Q equal to C M P Q equal to C and R T U equal to D R T U equal to D and we must calculate the values of A B C and D. So. There are different approaches to this. I would suggest to start with that which are asked. That is A. Look for a connection that A has with anything in the sketch. Now, how do I do that? By looking at the position where A is in the sketch. A is the angle between the tangent and the chord. And we just had a theorem that says that the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the angle in the opposite uh, segment, which is 29. In my sketch, I will annotate or note this was my first idea. Because when I'm going to write out the, 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 the answer, the answer must have a logical flow, and this helps me to create the logical flow of my answer. So that was my, the first thing that I saw. Perhaps you, who's looking at the sketch, saw other things first. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I looked at this first, because I looked at what I have to, to calculate. That is why I started with this. Somebody else might have seen, hey, but this is 34 degrees. So that angle must also be 34 degrees because they uh, are subtended by the same arc QR or the same chord QR. doesn't matter. Somebody else might have said this 29, so that is also 29 because both of them are subtended by the same arc here. It doesn't matter where you start. As long as you write down what your train of thoughts were, Otherwise, you're going to get, to, to, to get lost in the things that you annotate on the sketch. So now I already know that A is equal to 29. I write it in on the sketch before I attempt my writing out of the answer. I need to find B. And if I look at this angle, that is 75, that angle now, which is 29, so all that remains on the straight line is actually B. So that is immediately the second angle that I can calculate as 180 minus the other two that is on the straight line. There is C. Okay. How will I go and look for C? C also is the angle between the tangent and this chord. The, ang the angle that is equal to C, the uh, tan chord theorem, is this one or that one. But I don't have either of them. So I try another option. Right. Don't have either of them. If I look closely and I see that in this whole thing, that angle stands sort of alone. And that triggered my thought that perhaps I can use this. Because C is the 75 minus this one. Is there a possible way of getting to this one? Hmm. And what do I see? Yes. This angle and that one, those two are equal because they are subtended by QR. So that was the third one, and which is then the 34 degrees. So therefore, I can, my fourth thing is I can now calculate C, because C is the 75 minus the 34 degrees. And lastly, I'm left with the angle D. 
Where is D situated? D is the exterior angle of this quadrilateral, which is also a corollary of one of the theorems, which I haven't stated. But um, don't um, get despondent, grade 11s especially, because I think if you have uh, sit in on the previous lesson on the, the physical science lesson, there was also work that you haven't covered, but you will cover this. And uh, this is just an attempt now to give you some pre-knowledge as well. So the exterior angle of the quadrilateral, the cyclic quad, is also equal to the opposite interior angle of the cyclic quad. And that is how I am going to calculate D. But this opposite angle of the cyclic quad has two parts, the 29 and the 1, which I don't have, but are 1 and B, Q1 actually, and B. They are equal because they are subtended both by this arc or by this chord. And so my fifth section would be to calculate Q1, and therefore D will be equal to Q1 plus the 29. And of course, Q1 will be equal to this. So there I have prepared in my sketch, my answers. And now I'm going to transfer my answers to writing it out to my, to my bo book or in the examination then to my, ex uh, my answer, my answer uh, script. I also suggest that in your examination you make use of the sketches on the sketch um, sheet that is given to you. There, in the examination, there will be an, a, a special, an extra sheet with sketches. Just like I did here, use that sheet with the sketches. Because then the examiner can see how your train of thought work. Previously, I'm, uh, I'm not going to say it is the same now. Just say you don't get, you, 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 you don't get finished with your examination. You don't get to, to write this out. For some reason, uh, the, you don't have the time. Then at least you can earn some marks on the sketch or from the sketch. But now, let us write this out just to make it clear how my, my, my um, writing out of, of my solution should work. My first point was this one A. I can say directly that the angle A, or A, this A, is equal to 29 degrees. And my reason is tan chord theorem. Your teacher will tell you that there are specific ways in which we state our reasons because our national department has issued a specific document in which it is spelled out how our reasons for, for in the circle geometry and in the riders should be given. Okay, So that your, your teacher will tell you exactly how this uh, should be written out. So that is A which is 29, I went to B. How did I get to B? By there I see in my sketch how I got to that. So this is also how I'm going to write it. B is equal to 180 degrees minus the 75 degrees plus 29. Why did I do that? Because these are angles on a straight line. Which I think is 76 degrees. 
the angle C, that was, the, there's the angle C, but in order to get to C, which was the fourth way of reasoning, my train of thought, I first had to go to, uh, to, to this one, which is the 34 degrees. So I got it from this angle. So now I will say that that is the angle Q P R, which is 34 degrees. Why is it 34 degrees? Because it's up in, it's on the same segment as the way that this reason will be written. The same, sorry for writing so small, segment. as QTR, QTR. And both of them are subtended by the same arc QR. And because now I have this one, I can safely say that C is equal to the 75 degrees minus the 31 degrees, which is equal to 41 uh, degrees. Okay. Of course, there's no reason necessary for that. It's obvious that they combine to form uh, C. And lastly to D, but before I can get to D, I had to go to Q1. And Q1, the angle Q1, that is equal to B. Why are they equal to, to each other? because they are also on the same segment, uh, same circle segment. Both of them are subtended by the same court RT. And because Q1 is then equal to what was B, B was 76 degrees, therefore D is equal to the 29 degrees plus the 76 degrees. Why is it so? Because it is the exterior angle of the cyclic quad, right, which is 105 degrees. Right? And there, my solution is written out from the work for my annotation of the sketch yeah, from using the sketch and I have a lot of uh, notices here this one says pick up the pace mm -hmm. um, this one says hi sir I'm Safiso Sorry, sir, I don't understand. You are going too fast. Please slow down. What a contradictory. The first one said, please pick up the pace. The other one says, you are, going to, uh, you are moving too fast. Yeah. I think that is just life, uh, learners. You will never be able to satisfy everybody. But so, uh, first one picking up the pace, you can surely help the others, like Sufisu, who says that I'm going too, too fast. If I look at the second question, question three, what does it say? Um, in the diagram below, O is the center of the circle, center of the circle, angle at the center of the circle, P, P, Q, R, S are points on the circumference, so again I have a cyclic quad, T, Q is a straight line, T-O-Q, is a straight line such that T lies on P-S, and P-Q is equal to Q-R, and Q-1 is equal to X. Calculate with reasons, P-1, which is that angle, 
P1 in terms of X. That's the first one. Let us, uh, do, let us uh, deal with it as it comes. P1 in terms of X. So there is X. This is how I go, will go about um, attempting this one. X is in this triangle, and this triangle is a uh, <coughs> excuse me equilateral triangle, no, an isosceles triangle. Sorry, because that is the center of the circle, which means that these two sides are radii. Therefore, this angle would be x. Yeah? If you can work with me, or even work faster than me, that is quite fine. If you can have the answers even before I finish this, for those learners for whom the, the, the pace is a bit uh, slow. Immediately, if I, because I have to determine P in terms of X, that is why I started with the X's. Okay? Uh, other people may feel there's other approaches, and in circle geometry, yes, there are a lot of different approaches to get to the same end. So that is also X. So immediately I see that there I have my triangle. Therefore, I can calculate this angle, which is 180 minus the 2X because of the interior angles of the triangle. But this is the angle at the center of the circle, and P1 is the angle that is subtended by the same arc as the, one at the, as the angle at the center of the circle. And my theorem said that this must be half of that. Therefore, P1, this was my first deduction. This was my second deduction. And now this would be my third deduction. Uh, there I have P1. Let me write that out first before I proceed to 3.1, 3.2. So 3.1, I have R1. Also, this gives me a nice opportunity also to, to, to see different ways that the angles are labeled. This is R1, which is also equal to X. And what would my reason be? Um, Angles opposite equal sides. Right. Not isosceles triangle, angles e opposite equal sides. Then I went and said that O1 is equal to 180 degrees minus 2x. Why did I say that? Because it's the interior angles of the triangle. Then I went and said that, therefore, P1, the angle P1 is equal to 90 degrees minus X, and that is, <coughs> excuse me, um, the theorem that said the angle, the uh, angle at the center of the circle. Three point two, what is asked to show that another way of the questions, unlike the previous one we where we had calculations, this was in terms of this was in terms of X, the uh, the the next one says show that T Q by six PQR, PQR, TQ by six, this angle. If it by six, it means that these two must be, these two angles must be equal to each other. I already see that this angle is X. Therefore, if I can show, if I can prove that Q2 is also X, then I can uh, deduce that Q2, QT uh, by six, PQR. Right. How will I go about getting to Q2? If I look 
at why I am given these two sides equal to each other. I have just calculated this one. Also, it may help if I write down the things that I have calculated in my sketch. So I have this angle of the bigger triangle. So I can safely say that this angle is also equal to that angle because they are opposite equal sides. And if I have this one, third angle of the, the triangle, and only that part is left. Right. So that would be, that was the first three. So that would be my fourth deduction. And from that, I will go and calculate two. And hopefully, Q2 will be also be equal to X. Writing it out, there's P1, 90 minus X. So therefore, I'm just going to say straight off that PRQ is also 90 degrees minus X. Why? Because they are angles opposite equal sides. And immediately I'm going for Q2, which is now 180 minus all of the others in that triangle QPR. That is the 90 plus, uh, sorry, the 90 minus X plus another 90 minus X, which is this whole angle, plus X, that X, and all of this, that would be 90, the minus X plus X will be, will cancel. 180 minus the 180, I'm left with X only. There, 4, Q2 is equal to Q1 by the, showing the calculation, and therefore I can deduce that TQ bisects PQR. Lastly, in this sum, show that, and this is, I, li I love this one, show that STOR is a cyclic quad. S-T-O-R, a cyclic quad. S-T-O-R. If I can show there's a property of a cyclic quad, and this is the converse again, yeah? the converse of the theorem, the opposite, I have proven that in the theorem that the opposite sides of a cyclic quad are supplementary. If I now can show that these two sides in this quadrilateral, which obviously does not lie on a circle, but if I can show that the two of them, the sum of them uh, is supplementary, then I can deduce. Therefore, this quadrilateral must be cyclic. I have just proven that Q2 is also X. Therefore, if I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this quadrilateral now, What do I have in this quadrilateral or of this quadrilateral? O1, I have already calculated as 180 minus 2x. O1. Therefore, and O1 is the exterior angle of this quadrilateral. Also, I had the corollary that the exterior angle of the quadrilateral is opposite to the, is equal to the opposite side if I have cyclic quad. So if I can prove that these two are equal, then I also can deduce that the, this is a cyclic quad. The main point being that uh, if I have to prove any quadrilateral, a specific type of quadrilateral, then I need to prove that any condition for that quadrilateral exists. And in this case, the condition for the cyclic quad should, is that the exterior angle then is, is equal to the opposite um, 
interior angle. Why do I say that? Because I have just derived that this angle is also x. So the two of them are 2x. Note also that in, uh, in circle geometry, as well as in a lot of other uh, ways in, in, in mathematics, the one solution is dependent on the previous solution. Yeah, so we can use the previous solutions in order to get the next to the next uh, solutions. So if that is 2x, then surely I have the bigger cyclic quadrilateral. And in this quadrilateral, it's already cyclic because the points are on the circumference of the circle. So therefore, this one must be 180 minus 2x because these two are opposite angles. So I can see that this one and that one, these two are equal. Therefore, the, the quadrilateral is cyclic. Okay. Um, yeah. We have three minutes, so let me just write that out as well instead of, of trying to do another one. So how do, where did I start here? I start by saying that P, Q, R, the angle P, Q, R, which is Q, 2 plus Q, 1 which is 2x. I've already proven both of them are x. Therefore, the angle PSR, PSR is 180 minus 2x. Why is that so? Opposite angles of cyclic quad. And to be perfect, I can name the cyclic quad P, Q, R, S, which then is already equal to O, 1. This is proven earlier that that angle is 180 minus 2x. There it is. So these two are equal Therefore, T O S T O R S T O R S is a cyclic quad. And why is it a cyclic quad? Because the converse of exterior angle. Of course, this is the converse. The exterior angle. Okay. So, unfortunately, learners, that is all that we have time for. I thank you very much for uh, giving your attention. I'm very sorry that I could not get to all of your messages, but um, being under pressure either to work faster or to work slower, I did not get to all of them. But have a great time and all of the best. Thank you. Thank you.